Did somebody say that Dane DeHaan was going to be in this movie? Because I'm freaking out right now! Hi, I'm Felix Jones on LEGO Cheetah, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, I'm going to be doing, obviously, a non-spoiler section and a spoiler section, obviously the non-spoiler section first, so for people who haven't seen the movie yet, let's talk about it and basically... Well, let's get this out of the way. This movie is way better than the first one. If you had seen my review of the first Amazing Spider-Man movie, I... I had a lot of beef with that, I had a lot of issues, um, the, I found it very unfunny, there was lots of bad humour that really took me out of the story, um, I didn't find any of the characters very likeable, I, um, I, uh, oh, what else was there, uh, just generally there wasn't a lot of chemistry between the characters, they were all kind of very basic, and there was nothing, there was nothing that very, that, there was nothing that gripped me, that nothing pulled me into the story, and also there were lots of issues I had with the action, like, uh, Peter Parker never keeping his mask on, and, and the villain was very basic, uh, loads and loads of issues. But this issue, this movie, leaves the first movie in the dust, just completely, just uh, three or four, ten times, ten times better, just so much better. Better action, better chemistry, better humour. I mean, I still don't really like the jokes that they put in the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I know that it's comic book humour, and I do very much enjoy comic books. I haven't read that many. I've seen, I've, uh, I've read uh, the Kick-Ass books and um, and Watchmen and uh, a couple of Batmans and some Spider-Man and some uh, and some Thor stuff but I have never really gotten into this these the jokes a lot of the time the jokes are kind of stale but they but that's not an aspect of comic books that I really look forward to I look forward to the action and the and the superheroes etc and the powers um, but with this movie uh, the jokes were less but the ones that were there I did enjoy a few of them I definitely did laugh quite a few times but then again, I laughed at other things because, to me, okay, to me, this movie, I, I wasn't going to see the movie. I, well, I was because this is what I do. I review, but um, I didn't look forward to it because I was just like, okay, same thing again, another Amazing Spider-Man movie. I hated the first one. I'm not going to like the second one. However, with the sec, when I heard that Dane DeHaan was going to be playing the Harry Osborn, I was so enthusiastic, I couldn't wait, I loved Chronicle, I love him in Chronicle, he was a fantastic superhero villain in that, and so I wanted to see him play future su superhero villain Harry Osborn, and I was not in the least bit disappointed, it really was, oh my god, his performance, I may be making a big too, too much of a, I'm probably making a, too much of a big deal out of it, but um, I found this character, Harry Osborn, played by Dana Hunt, really enjoyable, fantastic performance, really funny, everything he says, he's a great diabolical villain, He everything he says just to me was really funny, really smart, he played the raging child but at the same time he was very sort of smooth and angry and, uh, and the, chemistry with, uh, the chemistry between the characters in this movie, so much better, so much better than the first one, I felt genuine emotion not only between, uh, basically we have several relationships in, in this movie, uh, one of them is Gwen and Peter, obviously carrying on from the first one. I wasn't really very interested in that. It, uh, it was just basic romance, nothing for me, usual complications. But probably better than the romance in uh, the original Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Um, and you have Peter and Aunt May, uh, a lot better. In the, in the first one I complained a lot because in the original Amazing Spider-Man movie, uh, after Uncle Ben died, I didn't really see any sadness from Aunt May, and I probably saw one scene where um, Peter Parker was actually particularly sad about it, uh, even though that's like the very reason he became a superhero, other than the powers. And um, various other things. Actually, one thing I'm going to say about the first Spider Man movie that really. I think. I won't say it actually, because I think that I'm going to end up um, reviewing that movie sometime soon, since I've been working on. Uh, superhero movies with the pop culture alcoholic I'm probably going to end up doing that pretty soon as well um, yeah so those two relationships both reasonably, uh, the first one reasonably good, Peter and Aunt May much better, much more much more feeling of real family emotion uh, really enjoyable, that's really worth getting into um, and the third relationship is between Peter and Harry and uh, I'm not going to do any spoilers but the first time that they meet there's this this real sort of cold, stern atmosphere because they've both grown up sort of separated and they, they used to be best friends and um, and uh, there's just this moment where they're both stood in this room together and they they can't talk about what's happened. Uh, Harry's dad has just died and Peter knows what he's going through and they're both clearly so sad, just so 
and yet so happy to see each other. And Peter, Pete, they, they, they just can't say anything to each other. And, and I'm not a person who's up for touching other people. I don't like it. But I was just sat there just going, for God's sake, hug him, man. And, and then this real sort of chemistry, as if they really have been friends for years, just sort of emerges. And it's really enjoyable. Um, the action in this movie, fantastic. I watched the movie in 3D. I wasn't originally going to because uh, 3D isn't exactly my thing and also the time that I was originally going to see it wasn't to see a 3D version but I ended up seeing it later, saw the 3D version really nice action um, really just I think what um, I was talking about in my Captain America review that you need to make the characters likeable and the action very enjoyable the action is very enjoyable, I found this movie a deal more colourful than the first movie which really helped made it more visually pleasing and um, and Okay, I still don't like Pete, I still don't like Andrew Garfield as Peter Parker. I have no issue with the actor whatsoever. I think he's, he was very good in The Social Network. I really enjoyed him in that. I think he's a good actor, but as Spider-Man, I just don't really get into it. I think that um, the humour coming from him, though there's maybe one or two yucks, mainly kind of makes me just not like him. I just I can't really get into his relationships, that sort of thing. Um, what else should I quickly talk about? Uh, first move, um, without spoilers. Well. Okay, Electro. That's the one more thing. Well, Electro in Spider in the Amazing Spider-Man Two. Everyone's seen the trailers. Obviously, um, yeah, we know that Electro is this big thing before he becomes the superhero. He has an obsession with Spider-Man, and yeah, I, I, yeah, I know that it's already been said it by Jer Jeremy Jeans or whatever, however you pronounce his name in his review of the trailer that um, it's incredibly similar to Edward Nigma in Batman Forever. But I just got to say that I saw that too. I saw it first. Before it, I saw it before he said it. I'm very petty, um, <laughs> but um, but after he becomes Electro, fairly interesting, a reasonably a reasonable villain, but uh, but I don't think that he really is. He probably plays the most integral part of the story. He's involved in most of the action. The action is very much involved in, very enjoyable. Other parts, I'd say that you really need to call your own judgment on that one. Um, but for me, I just didn't really become very attached to the character. So yeah, uh, before I go into the spoilers, I'm just going to leave you with that. Very good, much better chemistry, much better action, uh, much better characters, very likeable. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that I liked the main two characters, Peter and Gwen, but other than that, I did very much get into this movie much more than the previous one. I mean, there are moments in this movie, especially in the action, where people, you know, feel pain. I was going, oh, oh it's like, oh, God. Um, and I think that that's usually a good sign of, uh, that's a sign of good action when you actually feel yourself reacting to the pain of the characters as if you were them or at least as if you feel like you empathize with them uh, so yeah if you haven't seen the movie go see it you're probably really going to enjoy it uh, there's um, there's uh, must one last thing there's this one other storyline outside of the main storyline between um, Peter and uh, the and Electro uh, the outside storyline fairly interesting kind of it's it still feels like sequel bait really there's there's definitely more to come from this, this Spider-Man franchise, but uh, Spider-Man franchise. I'm sorry, I keep tripping in my words today. Uh, but um, but uh, it, like I said, it's fairly interesting. But you know, but you just know that it's building up to something bigger that you haven't seen yet. And if anything, that's kind of good. You know, because it keeps you keeps you keeps you interested. I I still want I want to see Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man Three. I want to see that. Although I still have this horrible feeling that I know that it's going to have nothing to do with any other superheroes. I don't know, I, just, I guess after the Avengers I have this real drive to get other superheroes to meet each other. But um, but yeah, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, Spider-Man universes, or at least that section of the Marvel Universe's stuff still to come. There's a lot to come. Uh, the Rhino, fairly enjoyable, doesn't make a very big appearance in this movie, no spoilers there. He's not really, he makes two very brief appearances in this movie. Anyway. I hope that that's not a spoiler, don't worry, that he just doesn't really have that much to do with the plot, but he's an interesting enough character and I feel like he's going to have some decent placement in future sequels. Anyway, uh, i got to say now, if you haven't seen the movie, you got to go, I'm going to talk about spoilers mainly. Uh, just cutting this into the first half, uh, Felix Jones here again, sorry, uh, cutting into the first half. First scene, there's uh, first action scene in this movie, there's lots of shaky cam. It's kind of appropriate for the scene, but it will make you think that there's going to be shaky cam throughout the action scenes. There isn't. Don't worry, that's not what's going to happen. Admittedly, the first action scene is pretty boring, but not boring. It's very distracting because there's so much shaky cam, you can't actually see what's happening. Just a warning, 
don't worry, it will get better. Uh, okay, right, switch off now. If you haven't seen the movie, go. You'll see it. Watch the movie. You're going to enjoy it, trust me. See you later. Okay, spoiler time. Let me just crack off with this. If you don't know anything about superhero comics before you go to see this movie, Gwen Stacy dies. She dies in this movie. It was obvious. If, if, if you had read any super, uh, that super, Spider-Man comics, then you knew that Gwen Stacy was going to die in this movie. Pretty much inevitable. It's very, very much hinted at in the trailers. Um, I, if you don't know that going in, uh, actually, uh, I think they're kind of trying to play off the fact that most people know that when they're going in. I'm, I'm going to tackle that first. Uh, Gwen Stacy's death. Um, at the beginning of the movie, we have this big speech where Gwen Stacy is talking at her graduation, and it's just so obvious, just such blatant foreshadowing. I mean, I liked the movie, I enjoyed it, but these parts in particular, mainly the romance, were what drew me away from the movie. Uh, when I found out, I knew she was going to die, that big speech, I was just like, okay, this is just foreshadowing. At the end, they're going to replay this speech. When they did replay the speech at the end, I just went... I'd, I'd been smiling, I'd been laughing all the way through that movie, especially at Dane DeHaan, like I said. Uh, his villainy, just really funny, really fun. Um, oh, God, I, I love that. Um, when, it, when he became the Green Goblin, fantastic design. The teeth, especially, just the gritty teeth. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love that design of the Green Go Goblin, even though I'm not a huge fan of the comic books. Uh, I can't really say that I loved it in comparison to the original Green Goblin design, even though I've seen it and I've read stories about it. Just a very beautiful design. Back on Gwen Stacy. Um, when she finally dies... Uh, oh, yeah. In the comic books, if you haven't read them, uh, Gwen Stacy dies by falling off the uh, the Tower Bridge. Oh, uh, Golden Gate Bridge, I believe it's called. I'm very ignorant of American culture, clearly. Um, and uh, uh, they sort of fake you out with that. That was... that. That moment definitely pissed me off. They had uh, Peter and Gwen, as you know, standing on top of the bridge, and they're both going, oh, we're so in love. Oh, I'm so in love with you. Yeah, I'm so in love with you, and we're going to do things together, and we're going to have a beautiful future, a whole future ahead of us. Everything's going to be perfect from now on, I promise. And then Electro attacks. And just, oh, what an utter cliché. Just to, an utter cliché to go, look, they are currently at the pinnacle of romance. Guess what's going to happen next? Tragedy strikes. Tragedy strikes. Um, as for Gwen Stacy's death, fantastically graphic. I mean, um, the moment when she hits the floor, I uh, I think the entire audience went so. Oh God! I mean, it wasn't like Watchmen kind of graphic, but I don't think anyone was really expecting her to die in a way that was just so like heart punchingly uh, uh, harsh and sort of cruel, and it was like a it was like a thump to the audience's mental depiction of what the film was about. I mean, you're having this really nice fight between Peter and Green Goblin, which was way too short, should have been, a lot, should have been longer. I mean, uh, I'll get onto that in a minute. But, um, but a brilliantly graphic death. And, um, and when, she, uh, when Peter is mourning over her body, I did actually feel a bit of emotion, even if I didn't like the two characters. It felt like a very realistic reaction to somebody dying in front of you and losing a uh, loved one. Uh, that was... I even felt a little, little, little bit in my... a little uh, sting in my throat over that. But um, obviously I didn't cry, because I'm hard as nails. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, that whole relationship, Gwen's death, fairly okay i just i couldn't get into it i thought it was too obvious and uh, especially the bit on the tower on the bridge the fake out uh, it's like oh no she's not going to die here she's going to die later didn't want it just could have thought of anything more interesting like maybe maybe they were going through uh, a better idea would actually be if they were going through an issue at the time and it felt like peter could solve the issue but then she dies and then he never gets to never gets to apologize never gets to make it up with her instead of going oh no look everything's perfect death that no no, uh, not a good idea. Um, uh, right, where should I go from here? Uh, let's go on to Electro. What did I think of Electro? And, and mainly, I think Electro wasn't exactly a key character in the story. I think that the chemistry w between the characters really didn't involve him. He was kind of a side character. He was more of a means to an end for Harry Osborne to get back into uh, Osborne Tower. Um, final fight scene. Uh, I really enjoyed the action, yeah, and his the two fight scenes in between Spider-Man and Electro, 
really entertaining to watch. Uh, the first one's conclusion, okay, let's look forward to the bigger conclusion at the end. Second conclusion, just very deeply unsatisfying. I mean, um, they just go, okay, look, this bit of science mumbo jumbo, magnetizing copper wire means that the uh, that means that you, the battery will explode, and uh, I don't I don't think anyone. At least I okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna compare everyone's intelligence to mine about science, even though that I really never was into science as a kid um, in school. Uh, but uh, but it was very it was just kind of like science mumbo jumbo. Bang, he's gone. Um, sort of in a very Star Trekish sort of a way. Uh, I shouldn't say Star Trekish. I I'm too ignorant about uh, about Star Trek. Um, but that, uh, I'm gonna cut that. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it was just it was, it just wasn't satisfying to just have um just just have the hero just gone and he's never going to come back. He came in one movie, left in the same movie, and admittedly they did that a lot with the Sam Raimi uh, Spider-Man movies. But at least I really felt like I got to know those characters. I definitely had a certain feeling that I knew Jamie Fox as Electro before his death, but only in the sense that I knew that he just felt like he needed to be needed. I wanted to know about. I'd rather I'd rather know a little bit more about his history and. Uh, you know, taking the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies with uh, Harry Osborn and uh, Doctor Octavius, I felt like I knew a bit about their past, and I was kind of familiar with them before they became supervillains. Instead, I just kind of knew, okay, this guy's a crazy psychotic, and then he becomes a supervillain, and then pff, dead. Um, so, like I said, the action is very enjoyable, but I just I was not in any way satisfied by the ending. Um, next, uh, Spider-Man Green uh, Green Goblin. Let me just talk one more about Dane DeHaan. Um, Sinister Six, uh, Sin uh, Sinister Six uh, hints coming up. I'm very excited about that. Like I said, I do actually want to continue watching the Spider-Man movies um, as I didn't before this movie. Um, Dane DeHaan, fantastic performance. As the Green Goblin, I didn't see enough of him. I wanted to see more. I wanted to see more menacing. I wanted to see more... more <sighs> the ears and the hair. and Oh, God. It, it was really enjoyable, but I just wanted to see... I wanted to see more of that. That was the best part of the move for me. For um, if I were to, I'm not going to buy the Amazing Spider-Man two on DVD. I'm putting that out there right now. I'm not going to. Um, I liked the movie. The action was very good, but I'd sooner just watch all the Dane DeHaan scenes. Uh, that's it. I, 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 that's, I, I don't want to watch the entire movie. The action with Electro very enjoyable, but I would ne But I don't think I'd really want to watch it again, especially because it didn't really grip me. Especially since I didn't like Spider-Man or Electro that much. I, what I did like was Dane Han as Harry Osborn. What I want to see is that. I want to see an entire movie of that. Maybe that could be what the Amazing Spider-Man three is about. Uh, a couple of other little things. Like I said, the chemistry between um, uh, the characters is much better. I really felt like uh, Peter Parker and uh, Harry Osborn had been friends before. I the that scene in bet with Peter Parker and Aunt May where she says, "You're my boy, and I can bear to have you taken away from me." That sort of thing. that was really good, really heartfelt. I really felt like I knew the characters for a second there. A um, couple of other really little petal, petty, petty little things that I'm just going to quickly pick out uh, was, and of course I took notes. Um, uh, in the first scene, I'm just going to quickly say, in the first scene there's a lot of shaky cam in the first action scene. Uh, I might actually have to go cut this back into the first half. Sorry, just had to cut whilst I cut that thing back into the early part of the review. Um, uh, two little things. Uh, first movie, I had a lot of complaining that um, Peter Parker was a jerk. I found him very unfunny, very annoying. Everything that he said to Spider-Man was really asshole. It's like, now, if you're going to be a car thief, why not dress like, don't dress like a car thief? And he's like, ha ha, wise ass. Fuck off with that. Just, uh, okay, too violent of a um, reaction there. I found that very annoying. It's kind of like when you watch a uh, uh, like a jackass stunt or a um, or uh, any YouTube video, any live played YouTube video about somebody who has an accident or does something spontaneous and makes a witty remark. It's like, ha ha, that's funny, that's witty. But in Spider-Man, I could not help but think that every witty, the first one, I couldn't help but think that every witty remark was so obviously scripted. With um, other films, like other witty characters, I don't feel like they're scripted because they're very convicted actors. When he's wearing the Spider-Man suit, I can't feel that his acting is convicted because I don't see his face. And so when he makes those snidey remarks, I just go, an asshole, an asshole. Look. An asshole reading things that a writer told him to read. But in this movie, he doesn't do as much of that. He's a much more likeable character, not as much of a dickhead. Um, 
I should probably also put that into the first half of the review. Um, uh, fuck that. Um, sorry, I'm swearing too much now. Uh, one last thing, really petty. Uh, you know that bit where Spider-Man goes down into the uh, thing where Richard Parker's lab is and it's a, a carriage that comes up out of the floor and uh, obviously he goes in and stuff. Uh, how the fuck did Richard Parker build that? Build, build that? I mean, without Oscorp knowing, you're, suge you're saying to me that without Oscorp knowing, Richard Parker was able to spend enough money to build an underground base with a carriage that rose out of the floor. And not only did Oscorp never know about that, but they also never went there. They never went there and took a, one look at the computers like Peter did and saw his secret film about the fact that the DNA was implanted in the spiders. Uh, how did he do that? I mean, I know that he was like an important scientist in Oscorp, but are you suggesting... Was he... I don't know, was he part of... I, I guess that it's kind of said that he was important to the company, but I wouldn't say that it was important enough to embellish that much money and get away with it. Uh, too petty, too petty. Uh, enjoyed the movie, really enjoyed a lot of it. Uh, Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker, boring characters. Jamie Foxx, reasonably interesting, but kind of throwaway. Dane DeHaan, great. I can't wait for the other movies. I really want to see where he's going to go. I'm so glad he didn't die in this movie. I just want to see where that's going to go from here. Dane DeHaan... Oh, actor, fantastic. I wish that I could talk to him right now to just say that I think he's a great actor and I really want to see him and other stuff. Uh, there are other movies that he's done that I haven't seen yet. I do still want to see them. But he's not using superpowers in them, so who gives a shit? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm Felix Jones and this has been my video of on The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Thank you very much for watching and go see the movie if you haven't already. Though if you're on this bit, you should have done. Uh, 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 bye.